Hi experts, welcome to a brief tutorial on troubleshooting Mac moves on the Nexus 9000. My name is William Brown and I'm a technical consulting engineer at Cisco. A Nexus switch serves the purpose of forwarding traffic using a few key tables. The primary software tables being the routing table for layer 3 decisions, the ARP table, and the MAC table for layer 2 forwarding decisions. A Nexus switch learns the MAC address of a remote device based on source MAC address of received traffic. This information is then used to populate the MAC address table on the switch. On the slide, you can see key CLI or show MAC address table, as well as show system internal L2FM, L2 debug, MAC DB. These can be used to verify which interface a MAC address is being learned off of. Moving on, please refer to the on-screen slide for a few common reasons why a MAC address might be seen moving between ports. For the purpose of this video, we will be focusing on the fourth reason, where multiple hosts have been assigned the same MAC address. The topology for this lab can be seen on screen. We have three Nexus switches. Each switch shares a common connection to Nexus 2, where we will observe the MAC flapping. As you can see, we have SVI 10 on all switches, and Nexus 1 and Nexus 3 both have the same MAC address assigned to their SVIs. Moving to the lab switches, we can verify the details of the discussed topology. Here we can see we have VLAN 10 in the upstate with 10.0.0.1 assigned on Nexus 9001, along with the manually assigned MAC address. The same configuration can be verified on N9K3. We see we have the address assigned 10.0.0.3 and the SVI is in the upstate, as well as the statically assigned MAC address 2022-2022. 2022. On Nexus 9002, we can verify the same, only here we will see that the MAC address has not been statically assigned, but is the auto-generated one for the SVI. Sourcing pings from the SVI on N9K1 and N9K3 will generate MAC learning on N9K2. Starting with the show MAC address CLI on Nexus 9002, we can see what interface the MAC address 2022 2022, 2022 is currently being learned off of. We can see that the MAC address is learned off of interface Ethernet 1 slash 1. To further evaluate MAC learning and the possibility of MAC flaps on the Nexus switch, we can check log file using the CLI on screen. Here we can see that MAC learning has been disabled for VLAN 10, which means that MAC flaps have indeed been seen on the switch. We can see the facility is L2FM, and the severity of this syslog is severity 2. Additionally, on the switch we can check what's the current level for syslogging of the L2FM facility on the switch. The default severity that will be logged is 2, and our current session is 2 as well. Adjusting the L2FM logging level on the switch can provide a more granular look at what interfaces and MAC addresses are involved in the flapping. Prior to doing that, let's try to check without making a configuration change to determine which ports are seeing the flap. Using the show system internal L2FM L2 debug MACDB address CLI, we can check which interfaces are involved in the MAC flapping for a specific address. Using the IF slash switch ID column, we can see the interfaces in hex that are involved in the flaps. This can be resolved using the show interface hardware mapping CLI and mapping it to the front panel port of E11 and E13. For a more granular approach, which doesn't involve mapping of the hex values, we can also increase the logging level of L2FM to 5. After increasing the logging level, we can then check to make sure that it has indeed increased. And then we can also check log file and now observe that we see the Mac move notification for the specific interfaces E13 and E11. As stated, the Nexus switch is just observing where Mac addresses are arriving and recording that in the Mac table. To resolve this issue, we will have to go to Nexus 1 and change the Mac address so that there's no longer duplicate Mac in the network. After assigning a new, unique MAC address 
to Nexus 1, VLAN 10, we can then go back to Nexus 2 and observe the behavior. After the VLAN 10 Mac Learning Disable Timer has expired, we can then check the switch to see if any more Mac flaps have occurred. The Mac is now learned only off E13, and we can check Nexus 3 and Nexus 1 to see if their pings to Nexus 2 are working. On both switches, the pings are working, and we can make one more additional check of log file and see that no more Mac flaps have occurred since making the change. Thank you for taking the time to view this brief tutorial, and we hope the information in this video will assist you with troubleshooting Mac moves in your network. Should you need additional assistance, please don't hesitate to contact Cisco Tech.